just going to go and say it. No, SeaWorld is awesome. But stop right there. Before you fill my comment section up with hate comments and death threats, just listen, sit back and listen to these 10 reasons why SeaWorld is still definitely worth going to in 2018. <laughs> Disclaimer! SeaWorld is in no way paying me or promoting me or even affiliated with this video. If you know by now if there's something that I don't like, I will most certainly say it. Rip it to shreds. If you don't know that I would say that, well, make sure that you subscribe to Planet Mark and hit that bell notification to be told on the next great upload. There is things that we are affiliated with. If you click in the links in the section below, you'll see a great list of super cheap travel or land vacation items that you need. But anyway, so enough of that. Let's get started with these 10 reasons. Number one, loads of great groundbreaking roller coasters. For example, there's Mako, which is Orlando's first hyper coaster, hitting speeds of 73 miles an hour and heights of over 200 feet. It's Orlando's longest, highest, and fastest roller coaster. Secondly, there's Kraken VR, which is, firstly, Kraken is an awesome ride, like full stop. Now they've added an, added an extra layer of virtual reality to it to make you feel like you're actually underwater, which is just awesome. Number two, Aquatica. Okay, this is our favorite water park in the whole of Orlando. Who? Oh, we haven't been to Volcano Bay yet, so stop right there. It's a bit more for adults and bigger kids. I mean, if you look at the marketing, Typhoon Lagoon is clearly for families in the way that it's styled and the way it's like, um, like marketed at children and families and with the cartoon characters. This is less of that due to them having like a, like a summer nights thing. I can't remember exactly what it's called. Okay, but they have music playing, so it makes you feel like you're in a club, but in a water park, which is a really cool idea. That's why it's like our favorite so far. So breakaway falls, what happens is you stand in this roof thing, it's like a vertical drop and then pull the plunger and the floor below you comes away and so then it's like you're like, whoa! I think I left the brown stain. And also there's like a high speed speedway thing, which is like a lazy river, but they've got fans and everything so that pushes you forward. We've got a vlog on that, so go check that out as well afterwards. But that's awesome. That's that's the most awesome lazy river we've ever been. That's in all fairness, that's probably where we spend our most time in Aquatica. Is there? It's the best time. It's just an awesome lazy river. And I don't really like lazy rivers that go slow, which is a weird kind of feeling. But it makes you feel like you're some kind of super fishy. And finally, there's the dolphin plunge, which is just a water slide through a dolphin port, which. You only really get to see the dolphins for like a second, that's if you see them at all. And if you look that, that way and the dolphins are over there, it's like, whoa, whoa, there was a dolphin there? Oh, I mean, it's a better idea in paper. It's a really good idea on paper and the way they advertise it, but in reality, it's not great. Number three, it's educational. Now, I know what you're thinking because you're thinking exactly what I think when somebody says it's educational, and that's educational. No! But what I mean is you get to do things that you don't expect SeaWorld to have and you can learn things you don't expect you would. For example, there's the dolphin nursery where you get to see little baby dolphins, which is just so cute. And you get to touch a shark and I'm not talking about jaws here, I'm talking about a few baby tiger sharks which, you know, just to say, yeah, I've, I've touched a shark, yeah, it didn't eat my face or eat my bow, but yeah, it was cool and, you know, just if you have kids, then you probably know, like, or if you don't know, this is a really good way to get them to learn, is by having the, another layer. So having another layer, having something physical for them to touch and be there, that would, you know, it's gonna be, it's gonna really go into their memory because you've got more layers, you've got like the sense of touch, the sense of seeing, the sense of learning something, like hearing, the sense of hearing as well. So you've got all of those things and that will help them learning. So if you want them to learn about sharks and marine life, this is a really, really, great place to take your kids or even just yourself if you're interested in that or even if you're not like I'm not really interested but that was still really interesting. Number four it's cheap mm, well cheapness is actually relative it's the cheapest theme park for what you get it's only $80 for a single ticket or $170 for unlimited four park annual access 
And you may be thinking, $170, oh, that's so much, that's not cheap. Well, let's take a look at Universal. So if you haven't already checked out a Universal Annual Pass, then go check that out afterwards. But compared to the, that's $170 for a SeaWorld Annual Pass, or for the Universal Annual Pass, you're looking at, for a, well, for a decent one, over $300. This gives you four parks and this gives you three. Admittedly, two of those parks are in Tampa, but still, you know, it's still included. Number five, Discovery Cove. Okay, I can't tell you enough how much we love Discovery Cove. I mean, we love Disney, we love Universal, but this, every single time, I've been there for like, you know, Orlando for 10 years, and every single time, Discovery Cove tops it off. Even if you don't go to anywhere else, Discovery Cove will be the best. I mean more than Magic Kingdom, more than Islands of Adventure. This is always top of our list because it's just absolutely fantastic. It's an unmissable day and that's the thing, included in the price of Discovery Cove is those SeaWorld tickets. So you don't need to buy any more additional tickets because it's with it. I mean, even if you don't want to go to SeaWorld or if you don't want to buy a ticket, buy a Discovery Cove ticket because even just what you get for free with Discovery Cove is worth the price. Which is kind of what I'm going to say to you now. So let's play a game of what do you get free with Discovery Cove? Okay, so let me let me take a breath. Okay, so <gasps> food including burgers, hot dogs, fries, meatballs, drinks, soft drinks, alcoholic drinks, icy drinks, biscuits, crisps, ice creams, ice cream bars, cookies, brownies, shampoo, conditioner, towels, wetsuits, lockers. <laughs> Right, and the number one reason is the dolphin swim. That is definitely worth it, just on its own. It's such a good experience that to actually they be able to interact with a dolphin, like ride, touch, stroke, kiss a dolphin. And the trains are so good at getting everyone involved, taking photos and really accommodating for any, for any needs. And you really get to learn a lot about the dolphins, which is such a good thing. And I don't care what people say, the way that you see the dolphins in Discovery Cove playing and really enjoying and the way that these people care about, genuinely care about, not reading from a script, caring about their animals, that's something that you can't, that's something that you really can't just watch a documentary on. You can genuinely see these people really care about these animals and you would love those animals as well. Number six, all the trainers and carers are all trained marine biologists. So no, they're not drunk teenagers that don't care because they're on minimum wage, which, you know, if you're on minimum wage, well, you probably wouldn't care about your job. You probably don't if you are. But yeah, these are actually people that have devoted their lives to learning about and caring for these animals. If you just look, if you take a quick look into SeaWorld and what they actually do, they do research and scientific studies into these animals. So to say that they don't care about these animals is such a misconception, which is such a horrible thing for you to say, because you're insulting these people which are earning like their PhDs, their doctors, their people which are learning to like all the things that you know about these animals. It's because of places like SeaWorld. Maybe not SeaWorld exactly, but places like SeaWorld putting money in to look and care after these animals. You may not agree with corporations, which is fine, but these people are here for the animals, not for the money, or maybe a bit for the money, but they are mostly here. They devote their lives to animals. Number seven, Bush Gardens, as well as included in your ticket. So Bush Gardens, so take a day of driving, because there's, if you're staying on Orlando, then from SeaWorld, or even most hotels, every time we went, they've had transport shuttles going to Bush Gardens. And again, more epic rides. These have some of the best roller coasters in the whole of Florida. You've got Shikra, which is a vertical drop roller coaster. I think you go vertical drops twice. You've got Cheetah Hunt, which is just a really fast coaster. And you've also got Falcon's Fury, which is a 102 meter high drop tower, which you go right to the top of, then you start to lean forward, so you're staring at the ground. And you don't need me to tell you that it's brown trousers time. Number eight, short queue times. Not including Aquatica, okay? Because during the summer, Aquatica is really busy, annoyingly busy Aquatica. And they've got no kind of tapu tapu system or fast pass that you could like book and virtually wait in line. It's just it's just annoying in the summer. Don't go in the summer if you, can't, if you can help it. I've never waited for more than half an hour for a ride at SeaWorld. I'm probably even saying like maybe 10, 15 minutes is the longest, which is 
insane because for a new ride as well, a new ride Mako when we went in November, that was it was new that year. You would expect for like Universal or Disney to be waiting at least two hours in pretty much every day, two hours for every day for a brand new ride, uh, especially Disney. But here, I swear, I think it was only about 10 minutes for the queue. And also Bush Gardens, we went to Cobra's Curse. That was literally only a five minute wait for Cobra's Curse, the brand new kind of flagship roller coaster which they had at Bush Gardens. I don't think it went to zero. I think that was just the lowest it went. We were, we were straight on and that was new. So if you like roller coasters but hate queuing like me, then now has never been a better time to go. Number nine, they're going through the biggest changes. Okay, they've had the whole blackfish thing to deal with, so they're trying to move away from all of that. So they got rid of their orca breeding program, and they're kind of taking a step back away from the shows and trying to progress it forward to something more conservation orientated. I mean, the shows aren't what they used to be. The trainers used to get in the waters with the killer whales, and the killer whales would come up and throw these trainers like 50 foot into the air as they dive into the water, which is just, it was just amazing. Like you wouldn't have seen anything like that in your life. But now it's kind of, they've taken it, they're not getting as good, they're not as good as they once were, which is a shame in a way. I mean, they are, it's good that they're getting away from this whole animal circus feel, but at the same time, the likelihood is once these gone, SeaWorld, they're not going to get them back. Once they're gone, they're gone. And it would be such a shame for you to say, no, I didn't want to see that, I wish I did. And it's, you know, it's not the same watching on a film than actually seeing it right in front of your face. So they're more focused on the customer experience. I feel that sometimes, tell me if you agree, that Disney or Universal get away with having some really lame rides. I'm not even caring as much as the customer experience because they can just, I don't know, throw a film franchise on it or like slap Goofy's face on the ride and people will like it all because it's got their name on it. But SeaWorld don't have that. I don't really care what these animals are. If the ride's not good, then I will not like it. I won't be going on it again. And finally, number 10, make up your own mind. It's so easy nowadays to buy into this negative press because it's everywhere and all this fake news is everywhere and the like adopted pictures, it's so easy just to get bought in. But, you know, don't let anybody else make up your morals for you because that's a, such a dangerous place to be in for you to just decide your own mind on what someone else has said. If you're just looking back on history, I don't want to get into it too much, because, but that's why wars, that's how extremism happens, but because people are just willing to listen to other people without questioning them. Always question, I always say question, question, go see yourself, because as I said before, no one's going to tell me that those people don't love those animals at Discovery Cove, just seeing how well they're looked after. So all because your friends have seen a picture on Facebook, because they're like, oh, I've just seen this video, and it says it's bad, and all animals, they eat them and turn into sandwiches. All because somebody says that, if you're going to change your mind, that's not the kind of thing that you should be having. You should be going out there, even if you just do it once. Go out there, see for yourself, decide for yourself. Make your own mind up. So what I'm saying is don't just watch Blackfish. Go there, visit SeaWorld, tell me what you think, make up your own mind. But then again, these are just my 10 reasons. If you've got any different reasons or if you disagree with me, please tell me in the comments section below. But before you do, make sure you subscribe to Plant Mark and hit that bell notification to be told of the next great upload and definitely remember to check out those links in the description box below for super cheap vacation essentials that you need. Remember to like and share this video, follow us on Twitter at planetmarkvlog or facebook.com forward slash planetmarkvlog or instagram at disney.dreamer underscore uk. See you in the next one guys. Bye 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 bye.